Okay, so I did it. I totally did it, and I've got some very exciting news for you. And no, this news has nothing to do with my mustache. So get over it. It's happening. It's there. And we're just gonna move on with it. So as some of you know, I actually went ahead and sold my MacBook Pro and bought a PC laptop, a gaming laptop that's actually made to play computer games on, uh, but it's actually just perfect for editing videos on, and I'm very excited to share the news with you. Uh, the move was very successful, it was a very good idea, and uh, there's literally no turning back for me anytime soon when it comes to my video editing laptop. Uh, because I think I made that good of a decision, hence the title of this video. Um, I, I, I really think that the setup I have now for editing is, is very clearly the best decision for a pro-level or mid-level photographer or videographer looking to get some extra power for editing that 4K video out of their laptop, here's the solution for you. I put the American flag on there and I recommend you do the same because this thing looks like a weapon. The MSI GS43 VR laptop is the single solution a 4K videographer professional needs for his or her workflow. So let's start off with why I felt like I even needed to change my laptop in the first place. Well, my MacBook Pro was a beautiful device and I literally loved that thing with every ounce of my being. The only thing it didn't do well was edit 4K video in Adobe Premiere. Now I know that Final Cut Pro 10 works better on the MacBook Pro, even, even better than Premiere, it's, it's, it's optimized for it. But, but the truth is, is that, that the platform that I have chosen to make myself proficient in does not run well on the MacBook Pro. In fact, playback in the timeline was unbelievably choppy. I can't believe I spent all of these years editing this video and tolerating this choppiness on my MacBook Pro. Regardless, here we are, um, and we learn from our mistakes. I settled upon the MSI brand because of its value. Uh, now, there's nothing terribly sexy about this laptop. It is a little bit thick. Uh, it is, you know, I think it's a pretty sexy laptop, actually. Even though it's a little bit thick, it's got a lot of power underneath the hood to make up for it. Inside my version, I have an Intel Core i7 6700HQ processor. Now they are shipping these laptops with the new Kaby Lake processors. Kaby Lake, Kaby Lake. You know they already have the newest and greatest processor upgrade available. I, for one, am reviewing my version. So inside my version, I've got the Intel Core i7 6700HQ processor. Here's the big one. This is the whole reason I bought this laptop is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 graphics card that's gonna help with that 4K video playback in the timeline as well as that rendering uh, as you export your videos. The GTX 1060 also comes with six gigabytes of built-in RAM. The device comes with 16 gigabytes of built-in DDR4 RAM. Dual disk drives in this puppy. We have a SanDisk 128 gigabyte PCIe SSD for running the operating system as well as a 7200 RPM HDD for storing larger files. I've edited 4K video off of this drive and had no problems playing things back in the timeline unless I stack 4K videos 3D. Now the weight of this device is almost 4.16 pounds or 1.8 kilograms. The newest version of this laptop sells new for around $1,500. However, I got mine off of Craigslist for $800. $800 I spent on my laptop. What a wonderful, wonderful, amazing deal that is. Now, this device features a beautiful 14-inch LG Philips 1080p display. It's beautiful and it's matte and it's beautiful. Here comes some of that beautiful connection specification. On the left side of the laptop, we have an ethernet cable, always handy, our power in port, a USB 3.0 type A input, a SD card slot, which happens to only feature USB 2.0 speeds. Very disappointing, going to have to bring an extra card reader with me if I want those fast file transfer speeds. And then we have our microphone input and hi-fi headphone jack. On the right side of the computer, we have a Kensington lock, which I've never used in my entire life. 
a full-size HDMI out with 4K video output, nice to see there. We have another USB 3.0 Type-A input, as well as, here's the grand finale, we have a Thunderbolt 3 port on this computer, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get into the Thunderbolt 3 cable and what its capability is uh, later on in this review, but let me tell you, the Thunderbolt 3 connectivity was the second biggest reason I bought this laptop. Incredible, incredible platform there. So this notebook was designed and optimized for playing video games, computer games. However, it just so happens to be that video editors can also benefit from the same things video gamers have to benefit from in a laptop like this. So we're following suit. We are just chasing after the optimal gaming laptop and I think I found the best one. It comes pre-installed with Windows 10 64-bit. Again, I run Adobe Creative Cloud on this beauty so well. The trackpad leaves a lot to be desired. It definitely leaves a lot to be desired. It's not terrible, but it's, it's pretty bad, especially coming from a MacBook Pro. I use a mouse anyway. You should be using a mouse anyway. And that's the end of that discussion. The reviews that I read about this laptop said, don't even think about running this laptop off of its battery power. They were complaining about like a one hour battery life. Honestly, I can get three and a half hours of good editing done uh, at a coffee shop or something. Really, the battery lasts long enough for me and and you know, considering that I'm mostly going to be at my desk, uh, you know, it's, the battery life isn't a huge thing for me, but I uh, was actually pretty impressed with what we had built in. It's got a massive battery built in, massive battery built in, and that's because this computer just uses so much energy as it's, it's doing its processes, it says it's firing up that big, big power hungry processor and graphics card. Uh, it's gonna be sucking a lot of power out of that battery, which is built bigger to compensate for the huge energy consumption here. And the same applies to the power brick and charger as well. So Thunderbolt 3 is essentially the same thing as USB-C 3.1, except instead of a 10 gigabit transfer rate, we're looking at a 40 gigabit transfer rate here. Thunderbolt 3 is the next hot thing in the computer industry. Say goodbye to USB-C. Thunderbolt 3 is where it's going to be. With those 40 gigabits of transfer speed, I'm able to power up my entire workstation. That's two computer monitors, as well as several USB 3.0 peripherals, a webcam, uh, lots of hard drives. I'll go through this one Thunderbolt 3 cable which is magnificent. When I am spending my days running around from the office to coffee shops, back to my home, always working, I never ever want to just get home and be forced to plug in so many different cables into my laptop in order to get my desktop workstation up and running. I'd rather plug in just one cable. I do still have to plug in the power cable. There is no power delivery through the Thunderbolt 3 port on this laptop, it's because of that energy consumption we talked about earlier. Regardless, just plugging in two cables when I get home to make my entire workstation come to life is beautiful. I use the pluggable Thunderbolt 3 docking station, which features multiple different types of outputs, including a display out, two more Thunderbolt 3 outputs, USB 3.0 out the wazoo, as well as USB-C. You've got your sound card in there, you've got your microphone input in there as well as a few other things, including Ethernet, if you're into that. But regardless, we're getting all of that connectivity, all of that functionality through that one Thunderbolt 3 cable, and it does work, it is practical, and it is a beautiful, there is backwards compatibility on this Thunderbolt 3 port to USB-C 3.1, 3.0, and so on. Unfortunately, it happens to be the Thunderbolt 3 cable looks almost identical to a USB-C cable. So much that we're actually able to plug our USB-C accessories into our Thunderbolt 3 port to get them to work, and it does work. It is backwards compatible with that. Nice feature there. Nice feature there. So why is this the best video editing laptop to have? Well, I'll tell you. It runs Adobe Premiere and the Adobe Suite so much smoother and with so many less bugs. Playback is so much smoother in the timeline, I literally can't believe how amazing it works. Render speeds are double, if not triple, the speeds of my MacBook Pro. Adobe Premiere and the Adobe Suite features less bugs on Windows. That's because Adobe programs were natively written for Windows. 
having a laptop opposed to having a desktop PC, really nice to have the ability to pick your entire workstation up and take it with you. This makes me a little bit more nimble as a videographer and being nimble is something that I hold high as a priority of mine. Also, this laptop is cheap as fudge if we're comparing it with MacBook Pros. Maybe like a third of the price, a fourth of the price if you buy it used and wow, oh wow, does it beat the MacBook Pro in terms of speed and practicality. Now in terms of build quality and design, uh, the MacBook Pro takes the cake every single time. That computer is just a beautiful thing. It is just a beautiful piece of machinery. However, however, under the hood, the MSI GS43BR laptop beats the MacBook Pro every single time. That is a beast of a laptop, super powerful computer we have there. And I'm very excited to show you more of the content that I'm gonna be putting out speedy and quick with that laptop. Thank you very much for watching my review of the MSI GS43BR laptop today. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more awesome content like this, and be sure to have a good rest of your day. Thank you very much for watching.